What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam. I have a lot of plants and that's what we talk about here. And today we're checking up on some plants from an unboxing from last December. What I'm going to do is turn this into a series on my channel. As I approach the one year mark with plants that I bought through the mail or, you know, hauled on my channel, I want to do an update video and show you guys how the plants are doing now a year later. I decided to start this off with one of my Josh's Frogs unboxings. So I've got another unboxing for you and uh, this one I've been waiting for for five days. Really Jack? I picked this one to start with because there's pretty much an equal amount of plants that I have killed, that I have given away, or that are still alive. So I'm not gonna run my mouth for a change and we're just gonna get right into it. So the first thing I opened from this Josh's Frogs order were, were two different kinds of creeping ficus. I had the oak leaf kind and the ficus pumula, the variegated one. Uh, I am sad to report that unfortunately both of these plants are dead. I did manage to keep them alive throughout the entire first summer that I had, but unfortunately because they're the kind of plants that if they dry out even a tiny bit, it is over for them. So I had one that I put into a terrarium, which was the oak leaf variety, and that went really well until my entire terrarium turned into a mold garden. I'm still not entirely sure what happened. I had, you know, the charcoal in there and I had, you know, I thought I did a good job, but um, I have, I have to try again. <laughs> my first terrarium didn't work out so well and unfortunately one of those plants went down with it and the other one just simply dried out. And unfortunately the next plant that I opened is also dead and that is the last of the dead ones. So we can end the funeral now. This was a Pilea glauca with the common name Baby Tears. It's got all kinds of emo little common names. Um, this one did really well and I'm actually pretty sad that I ended up drying it out and killing it by accident. Um, I had it until about last month, uh, which is very frustrating because if I still had it to show you, um, it really filled out very beautifully in the pot and it spilled over all pretty and it was in my bathroom. Uh, with the rest of the humidity hose and it was doing really really well um, and then I moved it out of the way to fit another plant there temporarily and um, unfortunately where I moved it I didn't see it and if a plant gets out of my sight unfortunately its days are numbered so I try not to hide my plants from myself. On to the living plants. Some of you may remember from my Peperomia video my big Peperomia scandens and um, I grabbed one here So this is one of the plants. Um, we've got like kind of a, a little yellowy string going over here. Um, I need to clean that up off of this guy. But for the most part, this guy's doing real well. Um, it grows like crazy. I actually have some of the variegated, here I'll show you, ready? Right, right here, and that little silver thing on the side. Um, there's some of the variegated plant is up there. Um, this is the regular green one and I have several pots of this growing around my house. I definitely recommend if you would like something that grows and trails really quickly to pick up a Peperomia scandens. They're pretty easy to take care of and I have them in a lot of harder to reach spots which actually works out because they don't like to be watered a lot. So having them up high and sort of where it's a pain to reach actually keeps me from loving them to death. They're incredibly easy to propagate in water and I've done that a few times. I've also just stuck stems into damp soil and had that work out okay but I noticed that rooting them in water actually was a little bit easier. So the next one that I opened up is one of my favorite house plants. I don't even know what it is about this plant but ever since I got it and you can see in the original unboxing I've just been really smitten with this plant. This is my Pelionia repens. It is a trailing watermelon begonia is the common name and it's um, not a begonia obviously it is a Pelionia but um, that is what they call it because of the way the leaves look and you can see it has a little bit of growth coming in down here on the end and it has trailed quite a bit since I got it. This guy hangs in my east window in my bedroom and it seems to really like it. I keep it off to the side so that the only direct light that it gets is really, really early in the morning. And it has spread quite a bit inside of the pot as well. It took a little while before it started doing that. But yeah, so this guy has done really well for me. I've noticed that Josh's hasn't had them in stock the last few times that I've been on there. So 
Um, I don't know if they're tough to get or not, but I definitely recommend this plant. I think it's such a fun, and it, it, I love the way that it grows in almost like a spiral. It's just the cutest thing. I love it so much. The next plant I got was a Calathea Freddy, and um, this plant I was pretty sure was not going to make it. I got it, it was just real small, it only had a couple of leaves, it was very delicate. This was my first Calathea, so I was very nervous. I had heard a lot online about them being difficult to care for, so I didn't set my hopes super high for this plant. Freddie has proved me wrong time and time again and has just continued to flourish since I got him. It is a beautiful Calathea. It has taken quite a bit of, you know, neglect. It's been in this clay pot. It's a little floppy right now. I have to repot it and pot it just a hair deeper. It's put out this little pup over here recently, so I may separate that out eventually. I've kept this guy about three feet away from my east window in the bedroom, and it seems to be very happy. It doesn't like a lot of light. It definitely does not like direct light, but I love it. I think it's a beautiful plant, and it's stayed quite small, but it's put out so much growth since I got it. Next up is possibly one of the more impressive ones in this whole entire update video, and I'm very excited to show it to you. This is my ooh, Philodendron Little Phil. The common name was Little Phil. Um, I've seen plants that look just like this called a pincushion. I'm not sure if they're the same or just very similar, um, but this guy right here has gotten very, very big since I got it. When I got it, it wasn't super small the way that most Josh's Frogs plants are. It was definitely a little bit taller. It's maybe like a foot tall. You'll see in the inserted footage of me opening it, how big it was. And I was concerned about spots that were on the leaves at the time. And you can actually see the spots in one of this remaining older um, leaves here. And a lot of the older leaves um, have since fallen off. So. I don't really have the spots anymore, but I think that they were just travel damage or something had happened at the nursery. But whatever they were, they didn't stick around and they're not on the new leaves, so that's really great. This plant was very floppy for a long time and you can see how much smaller the stem is here where it's coming out of the pot versus here where it's thickened up and started adding to the plant. It's gotten thicker over here. Um, so I did moss pole it a few months ago and just to give it something to grow up onto I don't know if it'll actually grow into the moss pole But um, it looked a little prettier than you know putting just a regular PVC pipe in there so. It has a new leaf coming out right here This guy right here is a new leaf. I love this guy. I mean look at head test this guy Little Phil ain't so little no more. He's all grown up this guy did not grow super fast at first. I feel like it took a long time to get over the travel and just the repotting shock or whatever, but it has um, it has gotten its shit together and it looks great now. Now, I also opened up two plants in this haul that I have since passed on um, downstairs to my boyfriend's brother who moved in here a few months ago. Um, I gave him a whole bunch of extra plants that I had doubles of. So he actually took the, the spathophyllum that I opened in this, the peace lily. So he has the peace lily now and it's doing great downstairs. Um, that It did put out more flowers. I was worried in the video that you wouldn't get more flowers on your peace lily because I had heard somewhere that they give a hormone to the peace lily in the nursery. And if you don't have that hormone, it might not flower again, but that ended up being wildly untrue. So that just goes to show you don't believe everything you hear on the internet. But, um, the next one that I opened was a spider plant. Now, when I got this initially, I was like, yeah, okay, great. I already had a spider plant, so I wasn't super excited about it. Um, so I did end up passing that spider plant downstairs to Matt, but I did take two of its babies. You can see the babies in the unboxing um, that were hanging off of it and I potted them up and I still have those, so. So this guy is doing pretty good. You can see the two little cuttings that I stuck in here and they were very, very small when I put them in and now uh, one of them is putting out its own babies. So I am a spider plant grandmother and I'm so proud. That guy lives up very high in my bathroom because um, spider plants are like crack to my cat Jack, so um, he is not allowed anywhere near them. I know that they're not toxic, but uh, that does not mean I want my cat to eat my plants. So um, most of them, the cats are not interested in at all. So anything that looks like grass tends to be the only thing my plants, my cats go for. 
I hope you like this video idea. I hope you find this helpful to see what plants I've been able to keep alive. And uh, we're gonna keep it 100 here. We're staying humble. I'll show you everything I've killed too. And on the subject of killing plants, I wanna leave you with a small reminder, especially if you have a big collection or you're just learning, do not beat yourself up if you kill plants, okay? You can't have this many plants without something happen. Diseases happen. You could have had something happen to the plant before you even got it. Pests happen. There's nothing you can do. It just sometimes you're gonna lose some plants. Don't let it make you feel bad. It's a learning experience. Keep notes on your plants, stay curious about your plants, and you will learn how to take care of everything. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that people don't hate me. So until next time, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you tomorrow. Those two plants that I unboxed from this Josh's Frawl, oh, Frawl, Josh's Frawl. That's what you call a Josh's Frog's Hall, a Frawl. Were two ficus. This was a Pilea glauca or glo glauca. This was a Pilea glauca, and it's uh, I'm not gonna talk about cats, that's a bad idea. Okay. Or you can just keep hitting the thumbs down like the petty bitches you are. Josh's frawl.